Hi, this is Sally Wood for Be Inspired and today I'm going to show you how to make faux Roman shades. So I'm only going to be putting a couple of pleats in. This lady has windows that are separated. So she's got a lower window and an upper window. And we're going to hide the upper window so it doesn't make the room look so choppy. So I will show you how it's done. The first thing I'm going to do is actually straighten this one side out so I know where I'm measuring from too. This is really squiffy. Just going to cut along the threads as they are the straightest part of the fabric. Not only that, I'm actually making these lines instead of up and down. So I'm going to cut the width out of here. For the lining, I will cut that at 26 and a quarter so that I can fold the fabric around it. I'm going to run the ruler along the end there and just cut it all the way to the end. So the facing fabric is four inches bigger than I want and then the lining is quarter of an inch narrower than what I want. It'll all make sense. It just is as clear as mud at the moment. I'm using black outlining and I caught one of my ladies when she first started working for me sewing black outlining with the soft side on the outside. The right side is actually the side where you can see the weaving. I don't know whether this gets picked up or not. The soft compressed side is the wrong side. It sometimes looks like it's woven just where it's put on the fabric. I am going to double check that I do have the right side out. So that's the woven side. And here is the fabric. I'm actually doing it across the width of the fabric because of the way the blind is 55 inches and this is 54. So I didn't want to put any joins in it. Usually I'd join it. I'm going to use this outside edge as my guide. If I put that on the edge there, and you will see that it's not quite an inch, and that's where I want it. I put the fabric top on the outside like that, pop that underneath, lower it into place, and start sewing. Now I'm not pulling the fabric, I'm just holding the fabric in place and letting it pull itself through. Try to keep those raw edges as even as possible and work all the way across the fabric. I'm going to flip this over and shorten the outside to the length of the lining. Just going to cut along here and I'm able to follow the way it was woven. So I'm cheating, otherwise I would measure it. I'm going to cut all the way along the bottom of here so I can get rid of it. Having removed the excess off the bottom, I'm lining the second side up and I'm going from the bottom of the blind to the top. The reason I am not going from the top down with this underneath and this on top is because I don't want the fabric to twist. I need it to go in exactly the same way. I will just start sewing using exactly the same measurements as I did on the other side. See, as I sew, this wrinkles up. If I was to sew this with the lining on top, that would all be taken in and the fabric would twist. And I don't want that to happen. I want it to be the same both sides. Now, having just sewn this side in against that, this is the top of the blinds. They're within a sixteenth of an inch. They're so close. That's why I do it the way I do. Coming onto the hem or the bottom of the blind, this is where people get confused. Push your fabric away from your seam so that all of it's going the same direction. Fold that out to about one eighth of an inch over the end. Slip that underneath your foot like that and keep it as level as you can. Then run the outside of this foot along the raw edge of your fabric. And I'm going to do forward and back first and then I'm just going to let it run all the way across to the other side. Make sure it's nice and even. Again, you'll see that the top fabric walks, which is fine, that's why I do it this way up. If your fabric stretches a lot, you don't want to be risking that. So I'd use the firmer fabric on top. In this case, it's fine. I'm coming to the other side of the blind. So again, I'm going to push the fabric towards the outside edge like that. And that will come in about an eighth of an inch over the outside. And again, forward and reverse. Turn all of this the right side out. Wriggle the seams into place. It doesn't matter too much if this goes up, it's going to be at the back so nobody will see. That is the side of my blind on both sides. Press this up, it doesn't really matter if I put a crease on the back here. Push everything up into the centre and then when I bring it in line it should give a nice crisp hem at the bottom. Carefully 
press it into position. Bring the fabric down like that into the corners. I personally prefer to have a stainless steel foot to my iron as it doesn't wreck the fabric like Teflon can if it's scratched up and because I use pins often I worry about that. Turn it over and I'm going to press it out like that. You could put a cloth on here if you wanted but I don't think there's any real need to. I don't have my iron really hot. I have it on polyester and I believe this is a cotton so it's nice and cool compared to a cotton heat. I like to press these as I go along rather than all the way up especially from working in a small place. A little bit of steam helps. Fold this over. I want the trim to hide the seam that I'm going to put in. I'm going to iron the inch and a half in along the bottom. That's going to be my new hem. I prefer to iron it in and then I know exactly where it is. I don't really advocate leaving the iron on your piece but it acts as a bit of a weight and if you always have it less heat than you want then to do so for a short time doesn't damage the fabric. If I had it on cotton and I was doing it this way then that would be a different matter. I'd scorch the fabric. I'm going to sew this on. This is on a number four so it's quite a big stitch and I am going to pop this under here. So I'm going to start here it's about just under two inches in and about four centimeters from the outside edge here. I don't need to pin it because I've already ironed it in to place. The way to avoid this happening is not to sew it into a hem. I just find it easier to do that. In which case you just sew down the sides, fold it up and fold all of this under like that. And then you've got a nice crisp look. It's on the back, nobody's ever gonna notice. So it's really up to you what you decide to do. Just try to sew as close to the edge as possible. I'm going to go forward and back and then sew nearly all the way across. Now this is so I can put a rod in at the bottom. I tend to keep it taut as well, that's the other thing, so they don't run away from each other. As I get to my two inches or four to five centimeters, I'm gonna stop and reverse again. These openings at each end, I will stitch closed when I'm ready. I've ironed all the way up on the face fabric, steaming it as I've gone. Hopefully most of those creases are out. Turn it over. This side, as I go, I will mark and sew in all the rings that need to go on here. This side, I always do second. Steam it and push out from the inside so all of this goes out. She needs at least two inches showing. So I'm going to measure up seven inches from the bottom, put a pin across the back there, and then seven inches from the bottom. When you're measuring up like this, you'll find that this sometimes curves down. Just double check the distance from here to here and it's within a sixteenth of an inch. Now if it was more, then I would pull the fabric back so that you can make sure that everything is at the seven inch mark or whatever you've chosen to put in. In this case I've gone seven up from here and seven into here. That allows at least some of this to be showing at the bottom. You could do eight inches up, but I wouldn't do much more than eight. Across, I've measured three inches in from each outside and then divided it. You shouldn't go more than 12 inches. I'd prefer to go about 10, so that actually works out perfectly. I mark them with pencil, as long as I remember what it is for this one and when I go on up so it's all in line. With my thread, I place my ring on my mark and I'm going to sew but I'm not going to sew all the way to the front because I really don't want any stitch to show so I just catch you can just about see where my needle is just catch enough of the front fabric to hold it in place do this like a button three times but my thread is doubled over so it's like having six stitches there. If your thread catches, just put your needle in there just to give you some resistance and it will go through. So there's my three double stitches and then I just go below only on the back fabric and do a couple of stitches to stop it running through. I only use the uh, metal rings here because the sun will just rot the plastic ones. Three stitches to seal it off and cut back and then go on to the next one. Carefully move this fabric over. The front and the back should be even. And again, I'm going to just mark my marks. And then this one. And then I join this mark and the mark next to it together to find the center. Don't rely on these as the outside because sometimes they vary. 
they won't vary very much but they will vary but if you do it from the center here then that will always work I'm gonna put my next three on I tend to work on the outside first I've got all of those in and this is my middle roll that up not disturbing anything just yet pop that in so it holds the front and the back fabric and then twist it up so I can actually feel it and push through and then I can keep the fabrics as still as possible as I stitch them in and they won't walk against each other so I'll get that done and then I'll measure up again I've moved the first and second rows down got one more row to put in and then I'll have my three pleats for the front here I'll let that drop on down measure up my next seven inches from here again on this side if you don't keep these straight everything else will be wonky when they're hung iron this so it's nice and flat steam it as well get those creases out if you can because it's black out of fabric it doesn't really make much difference to the front when you steam because I don't think it gets all the way through but I still steam it anyway mark out this last row get them sewn in I'm having to fold it up but I don't fold it over and over I concertina it so that the fabric remains as static as possible and this is my last one so Put the needle in first. I prefer to do these row by row rather than mark it all out because I have in the past when I'm tired at three o'clock in the morning marked them out wrong and then it's a whole day to reorganize. That's my advice just do it as you go and then hopefully you won't have any mistakes. Three o'clock in the morning numbers start gelling together. Being in this business you don't have normal nine to five hours you invariably work strange hours. I needed to extend my ironing board so I've got a thin book just to fill up this gap and then I pop a towel down through that gap fold it over twice just over that part it's not perfect but it works if you just want to have an ex extended length to sew anything on or even iron just don't push down hard on this end because it's not really designed for it but it works. I put towels on if I'm steaming things because I just want the air pockets underneath from the towel seems to help with the ironing on the other side. Now again on this one I've marked the three inches in from the outside edge on both ends but I have marked it for the next ones at nine and three quarters so that I have six rings to run on each line to hold these into position so it should hold nicely. 8 inches is the smallest you really want to go and 12 is the widest. So sometimes you have to have some close and some further apart. But this one worked out okay. Just finishing off this one for the cast off. One more to sew on so I've straightened that out a little bit. I'm only working on a very small surface so I've got to be ultra careful. Unfold your fabric. Make sure everything's straight like it was before. Put your needle in all the way through and start again. I'm going to concertina the fabric back up. If you had a bigger area, you would get away with not having to do this every time. But at the moment, I don't have the room on my work table to do this project, making the most of what I got. Pull back the needle so it's only going through the, a couple of threads on the other side. And again, overstitch it into place, cast off. And this is actually my last row. Now, something I also do is not only mark up the outside on this one, I also mark up the center so I can easily mark across and use that as a guide. Before I sew on the trim, I'm going to just pull this across and then I'll just carry on ironing up to the top. I'm going to measure down five and a half inches from the top to the start of my trim. All this is wastage. I'm going to measure one and a half inches in, which takes the edge of my trim to there. Just double check that that's still five and a half. It's moved slightly, so I'll just move that up a bit. And pin that into place long ways, all the way through. Double check again, because as you're putting things in, they tend to move. Okay, so that's fine. Work my way down, maybe sort of a hand span, measure my one and a half inches in and put another pin 
in just double check you haven't pinned it into anything I don't like to pin too much in because sometimes as you sew the trim might be pushed further down or it might move further up and I'm going to hand sew this in because I prefer the look if I was to top stitch it would go all the way through and I don't want that to happen on these it doesn't matter nobody will ever see the other thing is that sometimes the trim and the fabric don't go well together and it's one slips against the other and you might end up with puckering so that is why I hand sew in I put my needle in behind I have quite a long length and it's a single thread so hopefully I shouldn't get any knots as I go over sew the top just a couple of stitches that's all it's really not going to go anywhere once it gets started when you're sewing with a long length just put your thumb on there as you pull it through and it should go through if it squiggles like that put a needle in and then pull it down and it will go in nice and even without twisting I'm going to just go down this edge as close to it as possible just the top layer of fabric like that I'm coming back almost to where I came out for the stitch and then going back in and then I only pull that much through as I'm sewing I hold the fabric up slightly and pinch it with my thumb only pick up the top fabric and then come up a little ways down my thread is there and my stitch going in is right next to it right up close I'm also keeping an eye on where the trim is in relation to the side of the blind every now and again I will readjust to make sure that that's still going in if I feel it isn't so I'm double check as I go down inch that into place put my next stitch in when I've got a section in I'll hold my thread like that and let it pull through and then I'll start my next section up I can also remove that pin because it's not needed anymore if I feel I've done it too tightly I just run my finger and push it back and it just loosens those stitches. I'm going to cast off this little piece and the last stitch I put in do a back stitch and I usually do two small ones along the edge like that so there's one two go across and under then underneath I'm just going to do a couple of back stitches. The first one I pull quite tight because I don't want that moving and I stagger them. Now I'm going to leave that long thread like that under the trim Nobody will ever know that that's where I cast off. I haven't actually finished sewing. Start again at the top. I sometimes have two needles going at the same time so I can keep them in tandem. Just little stitches as close to the outside as I can. Now the reason I put this trim this way is this side here where the triple stitches are is firmer than this side. This side ripples. The firmer side I've put on the outside so that uh, I get a really good edge. And then the other side I just tack down. The stitch behind the trim and the fabric is about a centimetre to half an inch. They shouldn't be too big. My thumbnail goes just between the two. That's about the distance and then I'll pull that through like that. Then I'll just do that across and back and it will ease it up a bit. I'll carry that on down. I've cast off around about here on the first side. Just coming in with the second row of stitching and I'm going to stop just a little bit back from there. Pull my needle out and start again here. I've got my new thread here. I'm going to just come up a couple of stitches into the fabric behind but not the lining and up. The reason is that if a small knot would just pull through. Carry on sewing that down into the corner. I do that because I, it's easier to sew this one on. If you start sewing this one on it's going to pull round and distort so always go firmer side first. Having got started I'll pull that thread all the way through like that. Kind of nudge it a little bit. Just coming into the corner to turn I'm going to do another stitch forward then I'm going to do a back stitch just a little one as I come into that corner. I'm not 100% sure where that is going to be so there's my second back stitch. Pull that pin out because this is all stabilized. On the corner there that is my turn pinch it with my finger into place. I'm going to just pop that back in like that. Put some pins in just to stabilize this corner. I'm just going to carry sewing this inside piece into place. I like everything to be stable both sides before I make that turn. That's my personal choice. Lots of people just carry on going around. As with the outside edge when you're casting off your threads, do a back stitch at least one. Take the needle underneath like that. You see the needle coming out. Don't go through. Pull the fabric back and do a couple of little back stitch underneath 
leave the extra thread in there. When you're restarting, like you did on the other side, just a little bit on the fabric underneath and then into the trim, it's quite a little bit of a twist there. Pull it all the way through, reset into place, and pull this pin out and straighten that like it's going parallel. Now on this corner, I'm just gonna put a couple of stitches across here, just like this. I've got the outside thread here. I'm just gonna take it down two more stitches. Try not to get them confused because there's the inside thread there. Don't swap them over. Then do a couple of outside tacks like that, just over the corner there. And then I'm gonna fold my corner in. Always fold it up. Don't fold it down and then put your 45 degrees in. Don't pull your trim over. If anything, just push it back into the corner, just that little bit to give a pleat. And then pin it, just a little tack to hold it. And then again here, so I've got something to sew towards. I'm going to sew that in. Bring that down again and up behind the fold there. There's my fold here and into the trim here. I do these quite close so that they hold everything in place because that's got to be secure. Back down and across. Move along and put at least another one in to hold it so it doesn't move. If you only put one in, it's easy to miss a line. That's why I always put at least two here. And I'm gonna go down a few inches so it's absolutely in place and can't be moved. If I was to be stitching this on the sewing machine, I'd just swivel around that corner point and not worry about it. I do it this way for this side. I think I do it slightly different on the other. At least get a head start before you start messing with that corner and make sure everything is secure. With this one, I need it to be at 45 degrees, which isn't quite doing. Roll it with your fingers until you actually get it at your 45 degrees. A little bit more of that under there like that. It will fit from here, which is underneath, into the corner of the trim like that. Pull it through, then pop it down into the fabric, but not through to the lining underneath and then across again into there just a couple of stitches and then again down into the fabric and then back up tiny tiny stitches down and up into that corner so it can't move and I usually put two little stitches there come forward slightly and sew it into place and there you have your 45 degree corner I'll iron it and push it into place and it'll go in nicely. And then all I'm going to do is sew down the top side of this like I did, coming down. Run slightly on top of the stitching, but in a couple of places it rises above. If this was in a living room or a dining room or a kitchen, I would be more worried about that. But it's a bedroom. It looks a little bit high. I'll just double check it. Just a little bit. So I'm going to push that down. That's why I loosen the stitches up. As I come across, what I do is I pull it down with my thumb into place and stitch across. And the stitching at the top and at the bottom will hold it in a better line. That's why I go around twice. Well, you should do anyway, but some people cheat and only do down the center. Got my last stitch here, corner going in here. So I'm just going to put a mark here here on that corner just to hold that in place. I'm going to put a back stitch there to here and a second back stitch there to right on that corner where that pin is because that's where my turn is. Remove the pin, do a stitch down underneath there just to hold it. It really has to go into that corner there. Twist this trim round and into place and I'm going to just measure up here and pin that there and another one up here so that it should flow into a straight line. Just made my first stitch up to here, carry on going. At least three, four inches, 10 centimeters should do it in my new direction. You see all of this is loose. Coming back to this corner, just gonna come along here like this, a couple of stitches. Push all of this in as far as you can so you've got your 45 degrees angle and sew into it. I'm going to stop there. My corner is right here. I'm going to go down on the outside and up. Because it's already in place, on the other side I actually sewed across the bottom. So I'm sewing all the way through to the fabric just like I did on the other side. And then stitching across just a little stitch, hold it into place, go down all the way through to the fabric, but not the lining up. And you're going to come back along here so it's double sewed in, nice and tight, all the way through to the bottom each time. 
into the corner here and then straight down into the edge of this. A small stitch to start off with like that then larger stitches all the way to the top. I was thinking why do I sew these in? And the reason is the times I've been asked to remove trim and somebody has glued it on and there is this horrible mess left on the fabric. The other thing is some people give their blinds and that to their friends and maybe the decor isn't the same so they change out the trim and being left with this yellow muck is not nice. That's why I always sew it in and not only that I do charge for the service of hand sewing it in it's not like I do it free. This is actually quite easy usually you've sewn all the way to the end and you just finish up but I'm gonna have to go across here in towards there. Keep it as flat as you can there and then just sew towards it only going through the back of the lining here like that and they don't have to be particularly small stitches. Now along the side I like to go across a few stitches then on the opposite side matching there and again there. So if you were to open that out it should look like a ladder going up and I'll just sew that into the corner then I can cast off. You don't want to pull it too tight otherwise it's going to wrinkle and look bad. And just do a couple of running but back stitches and then I leave a really long thread and cut it off. I'm doing the base. You can use a dowel. My suggestion is you put it in and then fold the ends up or you can do it that way. So it needed to be about a quarter of an inch longer. I ripped this. It's not even, that doesn't matter. Always put the good side at the bottom if you do that. Wriggle it to the end. I showed you how to seal the end. Push that in as far as I can. That actually fit. Now just like I showed you on the other end, put the needle in, pull it out almost at the corner of the fold. Obviously at the other end I started on the inside. I'm just going to go along a few stitches like that, across, going on the opposite side, just a few stitches, and then back up. Awkward to see when my hand's right in the way. There we go, pull that in. And then again. This is just to keep the fabric straight. When you've got heavy or really big blinds, they tend to weight down in the middle and the sides start going in towards the center. So you need something sturdy enough. It doesn't have to be heavy, just sturdy enough to hold it out. And that will do the job perfectly. I'm going to just go along the top to here, doing exactly the same thing. And that will be sealed in here. I'll do that to all of these. I've got three to do. And that looks nice and even without being too bulky. And nobody knows that I didn't do it straight, which is really good. No stitches show. It doesn't look too pinched on the ends. Looks perfect. I've got the iron. It's on polyester. It's going to press all of these or as much of this out as I can. Because it's on a towel, they should not show through where I've sewn the rings on. Pull that across and do it all the way to the top. That will smooth out the trim as well. I believe this is a linen so not all of the creases will come out. It prefers to have a hotter temperature but uh, I'll get most of them out and it will look good. I'm going to bring this set of loops and this set of loops in line like that and then this set of loops in line and this set of loops them a little bit closer like that. With my string all I've done is I've put it through the bottom loop. I've got three knots on it so I'm going to tie three more. You can tie as many as you like. Three like that. Then into the next one tie three more. That gives each one a little bit of separation and they won't just all bunch up at the bottom. The last one you just tie off which I usually do three at again and then I pop those into the back here if anybody wants to take them apart later they can and there's the string to undo it and that should be fine I'll do that on all of these something I have discovered over the years doing these is you might have one size at the bottom but sometimes the top isn't exactly where you think it should be so I'm going to pop that in about an eighth of an inch in from the outside on there and I'm going to mark it about an eighth of an inch in from this side. I've cut that and a piece of fabric. I'm just gonna put that over the end like that, probably to about half an inch. I've covered both ends, made it as tight and as trim as I can. Usually I use a one by four or a one by two, because there's usually mechanism under here. 
these have to go hard up against a wall like that so that is why I've got this narrow one instead when I used to have a workshop there'd be two or three of us doing this what you need to do is pull this out as far as it will go and measure up she wanted them 26 we only allowed an inch Let's see how big that actually is it's an inch and nearly three quarters so although she wanted it 26 inches from where we measured I don't think I allowed for the extra because I didn't know what I was going to put it on so I'm actually going to make them 27 and a quarter it won't really matter because I can hang them higher if it's too much but I can't hang them any lower because of the amount of space that takes let's double check that that's there 27 and a quarter I've pulled this one out all the way down again straighten this edge here and I'm going to measure down 27 and a quarter, 27 and a quarter down there, all the way up. Always double check, make sure that they are where you think they are, and there. Double check both sides again before you put any more marks in. Now I'm going to iron. I'm not moving the pin out because that's very important. I'm ironing from the top of that pin. Now I'll remove it to the top of this pin. And what I do is I pull the fabric away from the iron. That will cause it to go into shape. The other thing is just very carefully iron across and if there's any looseness on the top fabric it will go into place because you want it as sharp as you can across the top of that piece of wood. As I get here I'm going to remove that pin and put that in there. I'm going to steam it in so it stays as sharp as I can make it. Having ironed that into place I'm going to just unroll this, pop this one into place making sure that the sharp piece is right at the top just in from the outside edge. This fabric kind of takes up a little bit of the room on either side, that's why you make it so short. Having got that in there, I'm going to just roll that over the top. Starting at this end, I'm going to just staple it along the top and then I'm going to pull it in this end so it's sharp along the top. Now I've got both ends in, I'm going to hold onto the fabric together and just push it into that folded edge. Try to make it relatively sharp but not too sharp because sometimes you push it too far over and again you shouldn't need too much pushing it's just making it firm before you do anything else check to make sure it's even along the front if i hold it up like that the weight will pull it down so i'm pleased with that i am going to unroll that i am going to cut along here just inside where i sewed to about there and then i'm going to cut all of that out equidistant across. This saves wrapping the board separately. Sometimes you can't do this because you don't have enough fabric at the top in which case wrap the board but if you can do it this way I advise you to do this. Cut that out. Just wrap that up like that to cover this part of the board. All I'm doing here is pulling this up and over this will be the top here. I'm just putting it over to the top and then just pulling it in relatively tight and securing it here like that. I'll cut all of this back in a minute. On the edge here, if I do that, then it's going to show. I'm just going to pull this back slightly like that and secure it. And then make sure that this actually comes right in on that corner here and secure it again. Twist it up and again, just fold it a little bit further in. It will go like that. Secure it. Sometimes you'll end up covering the boards separately and then putting this on. Now I'm going to just cut all of this back. It won't matter that there's a raw edge. But to be honest, when I do lines, I actually prefer to put interlining in. But this lady decided not to. She just wanted the black out. I'm just going to roll that forward. Make sure all of that's in like that. Pull it and turn it. Thank you for joining me on this project. I hope that I managed to pass on some useful information. I am going to go and hang these up and hopefully I'll be able to take some film footage of it so you can actually see what they look like when they're hanging. Please, if you want to see more from me, subscribe and hit the bell button. A few thumbs up would be really good and then I know how I'm doing. And in the meantime, take care. See you later. Ciao. Mom, you can't do it. There's yeah, can. Hillary music. That's okay. Mom, wait. Stop. Actually. Mom, redo it. It's redo fine. It. It's fine. No, it isn't. Yeah, because I can cut it all out.